Um, well, first of all, thank you for staying so late. And for the interest of time, I suppose um, we'll just go straight to the metro. Anyway, um, my name is Darvin, and what I really want to discuss tonight is an alternative structures of doing ICOs. And because we've seen many ICOs recently, and um, many of us is getting concerned with it. Uh, sorry, they're still looking at the slides. So just a bit about what we do. Um, we're from Radau. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is we create um, digital assets or tokens that is backed by real estate. So imagine if, okay. So imagine if we can have a property, say apartment A unit 0101, and then we can have a token with a certain code that represent that property. Um, and then by doing that, we're creating a programmable real estate. So that is essentially what we're trying to do. Um, this is traditional structures that we usually have uh, when we're buying property. Now, this um, you know, presents a problem with uh, the mass market because in order to enter to a traditional real estate opportunity, you need um, financial, uh, a lot of financial commitment. That's usually the biggest problem. Um, and usually right now, what we do to solve the problem is a lot of us comes together and buy the property together and record the traditional um, ownership in a, in a traditional way. But the problem with this is that we kind of need to trust all the participants in this group. So we experienced uh, that ourselves back then, and we have been trying to look for a better way. So uh, by using the blockchain and tokenize it, this is actually the model that we're trying to achieve. So if we can represent a, a particular real estate to a particular tokens or assets, we can then have a lot more people come together to buy the properties. So this is the basic building block of what we are trying to do. We can now do an ICOs that actually has an actual real estate backing that tokens. And this is important for us. Uh, we wanted to achieve a certain level of um, publicity or public records because it deals with real estate. So we're using and we're building on Ethereum blockchain for this purpose, um, which also means all the tokens, the property tokens that we create um, will be a standard of ERC-20 if you're familiar. So it is actually usable and transferable easily um, across um, Ethereum ecosystem. Um, so this is the model that we're building right now. In an ideal case, what we want to have is that there is a straight line. There is a straight line between the properties and the token holders. Um, so in the ideal case, we want to be able to say on the legal title that the owner of a certain real estate is a certain token holders. That's the ideal case. Unfortunately, as we know, um, our legal structures have not caught up yet to that stage. So we want and we need to follow the existing structures. And right now, the established structures is trust. So this is the model that we're working on right now. Basically, the property legally will be held under trust. And then we will act as the middleman, in a way, to issue the token to the users. And this, again, these tokens will be um, an Ethereum standard where users can transact easily. Um, left hand side, uh, this is the model that, again, we're building right now. Uh, it really simplifies matters because a single real estate now has have a single type of token representing it. But in the future, um, it's just an, a step forward to actually do um, multiple assets representing a single token. So essentially, if you're familiar with read, um, this is basically a read on the blockchain. 
Now, when we mention about tokenization, many of us usually uh, came to the first conclusions of the use case, which is um, property crowdfunding and investment. Um, of course, that is a valid use case, and that's what we're building towards for now. But we would rather see it as a building block for a lot more other applications. So as soon as we tokenize a property, and we can have a tokens that represent this property, these tokens then can be used in all other applications in Ethereum smart, you know, Ethereum based applications. Um, one example, of course, the property crowdfunding, which is pretty straightforward. Um, another applications, and the second one, property tokens card. Um, when I show these to developers, uh, this is usually what distracts them. Now imagine if you're familiar with Ethereum, um, of course, they have an address and then they have a private key to access the address. Now imagine this is, this is a valid Ethereum address um, and then they have the private key hidden in a scratchable area, this part here. So imagine if this address, you know, we deposit property tokens and then we can create property tokens card, which basically opens up a new channel for property developers to sell their property. So instead of gifting, say, Amazon gift card, we can actually now literally give properties away. So that's one example of how tokens can be used. Um, the third one, smart contract-based will writing, this is another use case that actually being brought on to us um, through our partners. So especially with the recent high-profile case regarding wills, um, imagine if we can now write a will on the smart contract that will execute no matter what upon someone passing, we can now code in money, as in cash, in terms of ether, for example. But if I have an, uh, an asset, a real estate, I can't actually program it to the, real, uh, to the smart contract now. So if we are able to tokenize a property, we can then create a smart contract, real smart contract, that actually program my property. So upon someone passing, the smart contract will execute no matter what, and the property ownership will be distributed programmatically through the tokens. So that's another area that you know we can build on. But I um, want to highlight on the fifth one, Crowd Villa, um, which is this is an, an example application, a real application on an ICO structure that you know not just banking on the ability to raise fund, but really try to create a structures that um, that you know decentralize the traditional company structure. Another use case that actually I want to highlight, um, this is 10x card, just like Julian shared earlier. So uh, this is also another use case that was highlighted to us. Uh, in Singapore, uh, with the older individuals, they're usually asset rich but cash poor. So we were trying to solve this problem, like you know, reverse mortgage and you know, lease buyback and all that. It, it, so far, it didn't really work. Now imagine if you can actually tokenize their assets, properties, attach it to a div, you know, a application like this one, and then actually spending your property bit by bit technically, um, it opens up a new um, ways to actually create, uh, solve that problem, to solve the um, all the individual problem. So, okay, so, this is a structure that um, we want to highlight. It's based on an idea that is already validated, um, shared holiday homes, nothing spectacular there. But what we want to highlight is the structures of how a new business, a startup, can be formed. So the way we see it, it serves actually all these industries come together. And of course, the key of this business creations is democratization of capital. Um, we don't have a centralized model companies anymore. Um, rather, we separate all the functions out. And this is an overview of how we can achieve this. Like in the middle here, it's pretty straightforward. So 
subscribers transfer Ether, and then the fund will give tokens. So far, so good. But imagine if these funds now is going to be used to purchase real assets that will be backing that tokens. So from the subscriber's point of view, they don't lose any value in a sense. The properties will then held by a trustee and we have a local managers to manage the property. So all these functions now is decentralized. We don't have a single company that is doing all these things. You know, for legal reasons, we can put in a fund manager there and then categorize it as security. Fund manager will manage the funds which subscriber, uh, subscri uh, subscribers can send instructions to to do whatever they need on the property. Now, this is, let's call this real estate crowd villa token, RZCV tokens. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now, imagine if the RZCV token, it, it is a new structure where imagine annually, RZCV will produce, let's call it red token, real estate dollars, and then the red real estate dollars will be used to actually you know, stay in the property. So instead of pricing the properties now in, uh, in fiat currency, we can use this internal currency of red tokens. So if we see it from another point of view, it's like the RECV token, it's backed by the assets in the portfolio, but the red token is backed by the utility or the time value of the property. So we can always put a dollar value on the red tokens. Now, this is the model that we're proposing we can base an ICO for because in this model now, when we generate the red tokens, we immediately distribute it out to all the stakeholders. If we do it this way, there is no distributions of income anymore. There is no profit distributions because it is being done on the token level. And this eliminates, obviously, a lot of um, issues when you're designing your ICO tokens. And usually the biggest issues is distributions of profits. If we do it this way, the subscribers will immediately have access to the right tokens to utilize the properties. And if they don't have enough, immediately all the holders of right tokens can create a market for the users to buy and stay in the properties. So again, this is just reiterating. Suppose user A um, have RECV token, RECV token will create RED token. User A can now then use the RED token to stay at the property, or if he doesn't want to use it, he can put it up for sale. User B can buy it from the open market, which create value to the red tokens, and user B can stay to the properties. Pretty straightforward. And this is basically what is backing the RZV tokens. So the, the portfolios combined with the ether that the fund structure will hold and the RED tokens that the structure will hold. And then they probably have a fiat currency account on that too. So basically there's a fund value. And if we divide it with token supply, we have the face value. So if we do an, an ICO this way, participants of the ICO, which will hold RECV tokens, they actually have something tangible to value their tokens for. Okay, well, it's pretty short, I hope. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. The legal part is uh, put the fund manager as just mentioned security or 
So uh, it will be the because in the end, uh, legal wise, they still have to have put someone as the owner of the property. So I, I'm not sure that how it's gonna work. Or you just create something like crown crowdfunding Airbnb. Uh, I, <laughs> right. I just got confused. Sorry. Right. So um, that's well, obviously I didn't explain it enough. But the whole idea is that we have existing structures that everybody agrees that is working now, which is re. So we can modify the read form right now and actually attach the tokens to it. But then rather than just distributing profit from reads, we can now use tokens or the blockchain to create an asset to utilize the reads. So it is a hybrid, a new model that we're trying to propose. Um, this is not perfect. Uh, probably it won't apply to many of the use cases, but if you have an assets, an actual assets, and plan to do ICOs, this is probably one way um, you know you can look into. So basically, create a utilization tokens of the assets that you have. I hope that answers your questions. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah, so okay, so the question is whether do we need to create a new tokens that we tokenize. So at this stage, for simplicity reason, um, we are tokenizing every property individually. So yes, when we tokenize three properties, for example, we will have three tokens. Every token will represent one property. And this is how we achieve the modularity to be programmable. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Right. 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 So these are two models, right? Where we are right now is really tokenizing one property to one token. But um, as my earlier slide showed, we can actually group an asset together and tokenize it. Um, but we can also do it like the read way, which is we raise the fund first and then give instructions, say, to the fund manager to buy properties in certain areas, for example. So we can actually reverse that part. At the end of the day, the tokens that is released on the second model will still be backed by the portfolios that we have because all these assets will be held under the trust. And then we create a direct relationship between the tokens and the assets. And I think that's a key part. There's no relationship. So that's the beautiful thing. What we're doing is we're creating the platform, tokenization platform, but in the actual business model, all the parties are separate. For example, the local manager, their interest is really just to manage the property. They don't try to you know, make a huge profit for the shareholders. So likewise, all the participants, the trust company, the fund manager, they have their own role, and there is no centralized company in a way. Yes, so for the... Right. Right, but the relationship is loose. We, not a single party has an interest to make the whole thing successful. I mean, to put it bluntly, they have a role that they need to fulfill. And as long as they fulfill that role, they have, you know, basically they do their business. Right. In the event of liquidation, uh, does the token holder has the right over the property? Yes, so that is what we're trying to solve. So in, in, the, in this model, because we can create a direct relationship between token and the properties, if the property is liquidated, we can actually distribute it back to the token holders. So the answer is yes. Yeah. So um, your block-based chase, uh, block 
blockchain based REITs, right? Uh, does your token give out dividends? Um, in our model, in the Crowdfiller model, we don't have dividends anymore because the, vid the dividends it's created in the form of rate tokens already. Okay, this is what I want to create. So in the traditional fund structure, what we have is a fund that will operate and invest and tries to make money, and then they will minus their expenses, right? And at the end of the day, if there is any extra, they will distribute it as dividends. That's the current model. But in this blockchain model, the token itself will create a token, utilization token for the property immediately, and the subscribers can actually monetize immediately. So it removes the needs of profit distributions. So when is your ICO? We don't have a date yet. Um, we're not announcing that yet. Um, I think uh, what we really want to show is an alternative of doing you know, a safer ICOs in general. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Oh. Right. So MAS is the, the first organization that we reached out to when we started like one and a half years ago. And obviously we don't have um, you know, the legal structures that support all these things. But to answer your questions, um, stamp duties is um, applied for every paper-based transactions. So when we first purchase the properties and put the properties under trust, we will pay the stamp duty. Um, but after that, the tokens part is actually separate from the stamp duties. Um, but again, this is only for Singapore, and every jurisdiction has its own uh, uniqueness in terms of property regulations. So we're solving them one by one. Okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, Jarvin. Okay. All right, for those of you who